Hello and welcome to Ruckasaurus Rex, the channel devoted to all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. What we've got going on today is we're taking a look at Aubrey the Taurosaurus along with her offspring, her baby, her child. We've got little Dobby also in tow. Now this is a uh, museum line model from PNSO so uh, it comes in different uh, packaging and uh, normally this isn't 100% of the time which still amazes me but normally the museum line models come with something a little extra in this case we get Dobby the juvenile so um, that's a good thing there are occasions where uh, for some reason the museum line doesn't come with anything extra something uh, another figure like Dobby here a skull like uh, when we uh, checked out Doyle the Triceratops and we'll talk a little bit more about Triceratops momentarily so yeah we get something extra like that or with the original Doyle came with the stand but sometimes we get nothing and uh, it's a it's a disappointment and um, you know it begets the question why is that but uh, that's not the case today so we won't worry about that for now what we will concern ourselves with is checking out what else comes with this set as is standard with the museum line models from PNSO we get this uh, this uh, leaflet here that uh, looking at the side you can see it's thick and it's filled with uh, filled with goodies let's try to open her up let's see how successful I am at doing this without ripping the sticky we'll see what we got going on up oh, success again and uh, once again plenty of product on the inside so we'll put this to the side for now look at what we got we get these uh, preface leaflets that are uh, encased in uh, cellophane the main item we get is the booklet this comes with uh, all of the uh, uh, museum line um, figures and uh, they also come with the uh, the prehistoric animal figures as well that's the one thing that they all have in common is they'll get these type of booklets and it's instructional informational has more uh, illustrations of the dinosaur in question this time being the Taurosaurus you get uh, all kinds of stuff we've, we've done this before you can see that so there's that set that to the side and then of course you get, you get uh, the drawing paper this is usually uh, for um, children believe it or not these very detailed models are um, geared towards children most of the information in the booklet is uh, written as though you're speaking to a child so it is what it is you get posters uh, in this case we're getting posters of uh, other ceratopsians this is of a protoceratops and uh, I finally after all this time dealing with the uh, ceratopsians and I've been trying to figure out the name for what's uh, that goes along the back which are like the beginning stages of um, feathering they're called quills I don't know why that name that word kept escaping me but quills as you can see there with this uh, protoceratops some other we have you've got uh, a picture of this I guess we got a whole bunch of um, ceratopsians other than Taurosaurus with this one this is an Inosaurus right here check out the uh, that that hooked horn uh, for the beak the nasal horn crazy let's see if uh, what we get this time up oh, we get a Stracosaurus this is Anthony right there I wonder why why um, this is going to that route then here you got a spinops so yeah this is we're getting all kinds of different stuff I'm going to uh, yeah Makaira Ceratops incredible an Anchoceratops which I've actually never seen before what is this one this is a uh, 
uh, Spick Lipius. Another Ceratopsian I've never heard of before. See? Even us adults can be taught stuff. Another one, Cosmoceratops. Now, I have heard of this species. Yeah, but this is amazing. And Aguagiceratops right here. Wow. Plenty of Ceratopsians. And then you've got a Chasmosaurus right here which is the uh, type species that uh, the Chasmosaurians are named after, meaning uh, frilled dinosaur ceratopsians that don't have ornamentation along their frills. And uh, usually they have small nasal horns. That's usually the criteria for that. Now we've got some bigger. And finally, we've got a Taurosaurus uh, poster. Crazy. And uh, what else do we have here? This is nice. You got a nice scene of uh, everything that isn't <laughs> that isn't uh, a Taurosaurus. You got uh, a Psittacosaurus, which uh, is a uh, Proceratopsian. This was the ancestor to all things uh, Ceratopsian. So you got that. I'll do one more, and then we'll be done with it. Hopefully, it's a good one. Wow. I picked a good one. You've got uh, Pachyrhinosaurus being being accosted, being accosted by a Tyrannosaur. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty crazy there. Very nice. Anyway, I'll that'll that'll do it for the posters. We could be here all day just playing the poster game. So, uh, yeah. Right now, we'll take a closer look at uh, Dobby. You see, uh, we've got our little girl right there. So here we are, up close and personal with Dobby, taking a look at her, and uh, pretty cute. You can see uh, the way how PNSO has envisioned it. Uh, infant uh, torosaurs, no. Uh, no nasal horn, just the bump for right now, and the uh, the horns that grow above the eyes. You can see they're just uh, barely sprouting out, and uh, even as a uh, as a baby, you could see how big the skull is, just even on the baby, and uh, how it'll grow into uh, an even uh, larger skull. Torosaurs had. Uh, some of the largest skulls in the dinosaur uh, kingdom, especially with Ceratopsians, the skulls could grow up to nine feet long, which is uh, even larger than a Triceratops skull. But um, looking at Dobby, she's got some nice uh, uh, paint applications there. I mean, it's still a standard uh, PNSO uh, drab type of color, but um, they've got that overwash there, so it's pretty good. So. Uh, Yes, that is our little girl, Dobby. And now taking a look at Dobby's mom, we've got Aubrey, the Taurosaurus here, on a rotating platter so you can get a 360 degree uh, visual of the model. And uh, I tell you, the, uh, the skull, which of course is the most prominent feature on a Ceratopsian, and uh, it doesn't fail with this, this particular species either that uh, the skull and the frill looking very nice and colorful uh, looking at the uh, the skin uh, very uh, painted up uh, very dark with uh, some light uh, like at the belly the ribbed areas but other than that uh, Aubrey is uh, pretty uh, darkly uh, colored and uh, it uh, extends all the way down through the tail so uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, get a closer look and get Aubrey off of our rotating platter momentarily so we can see what's the what. So what we're going to do now that we've got Aubrey off of our uh, rotating platter and uh, up close to take a look as best we can at the skull. I tell you these Ceratopsians with their big heads. Anyway, uh, let's see what we got here. Looking at the uh, side there, you've got the uh, the eyes once again a uh, like a, a blood orange eye with a black uh, pupil right there she's got the um, 
some nice sized uh, horns that grow over her uh, her eyes and uh, they uh, they come out of the uh, skull dark and then of course taper off into this uh, dark tannish kind of brown looking at uh, the mouth area you see uh, that it starts out dark and it uh, gets lighter as it goes down she comes with an articulated jaw she's a large ceratopsian so and a museum figure so uh, we're blessed with our articulated jaws looking in that mouth you get the wet look you can see that uh, it, the, the beak is toothless until you get to the back there then you start seeing rows of teeth which is pretty cool got the uh, the tongue back there got the nose looking at the nasal horn that's a uh, brown color there looking at the frill one of the things about uh, torosaurs is uh, their uh, torosaurs actually means perforated lizard uh, by the way and I'm assuming that's because of the uh, the holes that they have up there this this of course represents skin covering the holes but the finestra they were totally I mean just blank if uh, if a predator bit through they get skin and, and some tissue but it would be uh, there'd be no bone here there's bone of course on the outer uh, perimeter the ridges there but that's about it but uh, as far as the frill that's some uh, nice paint work right there I kind of sort of love that design you see that it gets darker as it goes there so uh, yeah that's pretty cool turning so we can check out the body you can see that uh, that dark uh, pigmentation is starting off uh, there at the base of the neck you've got some neck wrinkles right there I love that you can see the uh, the uh, the scoots and the uh, ostroderms the uh, scalation looking pretty cool going down you see some more wrinkles right there that uh, dark paint goes down the legs same thing with the rear she's a uh, you can see she's pretty chunky looking at her uh, her thigh area for uh, for her um, her hind legs you've got uh, folds basically all over the place I love that attention to detail with the folds you see that that left hind leg is a uh, back uh, she kind of sort of semi is pushing off of it and uh, the uh, the left forelimb is uh, you know basically firmly planted toes the accuracy four in the back five in the front you gotta love that looking at the back it tapers down same coloration going all the way down to the tip of the tail turn it around to the other side you can see some folds there in the skin because this tail is sweeping to the animal's right side so you get that and then you get more of the stretching right there because this right hind limb is uh, stepping forward so they uh, the attention to detail is ever present you still got more of those uh, the scales right there it's looking pretty good you got wrinkles because this leg is folding up it's nice gotta love it and uh, more wrinkles there because the uh, Aubrey's head is uh, turning slightly to the right so you do have that it's looking uh, pretty good there so uh, we're gonna zoom out so we zoomed out and I've got Aubrey joined by baby Dobby there and a uh, little little info on uh, Taurosaurus I already uh, told you that uh, Taurosaurus was uh, they lived about uh, 68 68 to uh, 67 million years ago they even speculated probably um, started as late or as early I should say as maybe 70 million years ago and um, it basically uh, was um, basically uh, from um, Canada down to, to Texas uh, where it lived and uh, there are some places uh, you know all in between it's been speculated that uh, torosaurs were um, mature triceratops so um, a lot of scientists go back and forth with that I stated previously that uh, torosaurus has uh, some one of the largest skulls at nine feet long I mean just looking at this model you see how big that head is and uh, the uh, another reason why they uh, kind of sort of figure it may be a mature triceratops is because they were essentially the same size as triceratops about about uh, 25 to 30 feet 
this model is nine inches long, about four and a half inches tall, and uh, four point eight inches tall, if I remember my stats correctly. Yeah, it's about four point inches tall at the top of that frill, and nine inches long. If you measure that out and uh, go by the one thirty fifth scale, which uh, PNSO is based on, that puts Aubrey right at twenty six point two five feet if it was a living animal so um, that seems about right uh, 26 26 feet and it's a female I can I can live with that you'd figure the males will be a little bit bigger yeah as far as Dobby's concerned Dobby is uh, about two and a quarter inches long and uh, uh, about half an inch tall here we have our Taurosaurus Aubrey and Dobby next to uh, a couple of uh, Ceratopsians that I've uh, previously uh, reviewed recently. You've got Anthony the Storacosaurus in the center and Jenny the Centrosaurus on our right. And now we've got Aubrey lined up with another Chasmosaurian dinosaur and of course the, uh, the poster child for all things Ceratopsian. We've got Doyle the Triceratops and uh, Looking uh, at these two, uh, Aubrey uh, definitely looks uh, larger, more chunky for sure than Triceratops. But like I said, they uh, they were um, in some circles, scientific circles, they are suspected of being um, mature Triceratops because of you know the frills are a little bit bigger, the head overall is bigger, and uh, just looking at these two models, Taurosaurus is definitely chunkier than uh, the Triceratops, but of course this is uh, the PNSO iterations of uh, these animals. So giving my final thoughts on Aubrey and Dobby the Taurosaurus family here, uh, I love the set. It is a museum line set, so that's why we uh, got the included baby dino, which is greatly appreciated. I love the, uh, the standout, meaning once again the uh, the skull, the head of this dinosaur. Excellent paint job on the frill. I love the, uh, I'm, I'm kind of feeling the uh, the dark coloration of uh, Aubrey here. I know uh, PNSO is uh, notorious for uh, dark drabish kind of colors, but uh, for me, this works for the Taurosaurus. You've got uh, pretty decent paint apps on uh, Dobby the baby there and uh, she has the look of, uh, as she gets older, she's going to get darker. And uh, I love how they, uh, they distinguished the baby from the adult by uh, uh, the baby not having a nasal horn present, just a knob, a bump, the beginnings of one forming. And uh, of course, the uh, small eyelet horns above her eyes there. Um, looks very... Uh, very nice that they did that because um, quite frankly uh, the babies shouldn't look like miniature versions of the uh, of the adults they're supposed to uh, get changed up you know so um, I greatly appreciate that this is uh, another Ceratopsian uh, added to uh, to the collection here and I'm, I'm uh, happy about that it's got nice size it's in scale 135th so uh, I'm happy about that so uh, yeah, with that being said, we're going to close this uh, review out. Thank you guys for uh, sticking around and uh, please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment below and if you want to be notified when I upload another video, please hit that button and notified you shall be. Once again, on behalf of Aubrey and Dabby, the Taurosaurus family. I want to say thank you, and uh, until next time, take care.